As you gain more knowledge about WebDriver I.O., your tests will increasingly become more sophisticated. In order to manage this complexity, WebDriver I.O. offers a command that allows us to customize and consolidate our test definitions. This functionality is so useful that the folks at WebDriver I.O. have dedicated a specific page in the guide for the utility. The add command command provides us with a way to write clearer tests that are easier to keep up to date. By combining a series of steps into a single request, we're able to reduce the total amount of code written. This technique is similar to page objects, which is a topic we'll cover in depth in the next module, but it requires less code to implement, which is why I want to talk about it first. Add command works by taking a name for your command, plus a function to run whenever this custom command is called. What goes inside the function is up to you. You can use it to consolidate a series of WebDriver I.O. commands, or have it run a completely custom Node.js script. For this example, we'll be taking another look at the review test script we wrote several lessons back. In it, we test the product review functionality of our site. To do this, we type text into two different input fields, then submit the form, and validate whether the correct error messages or content is shown. The add command definition can go anywhere in our file, but I like to include it at the very top outside of the describe block. This helps ensure that it's assigned before we try using it. It also makes it easier to find the command if we need to update it, say if a selector changes for one of our elements. After naming our command, we'll define the function that will run when it's called. It can take any number of parameters depending on our need. Here, we'll define two arguments, the email address and review text to use in the submission. The first thing we'll do inside our function is set the email address to the value passed in. Next, we'll set the value of the review content input to the text we're given. This is the same thing we do in our test scripts below, just consolidated to a common command. Because our tests check both successful and failed scenarios, we need to accept situations where the email or review isn't entered. To do that, we'll wrap both set value calls in conditional if statements. These if conditionals will allow us to run our command in a variety of ways. We can test with an email but no review, with a review but no email, with neither, and finally, with both. The last command to run is to submit the form. We don't need to wrap this in a conditional because we're always going to submit the form when calling submit review. Now that we have our command written out, it's time to use it. The first test is a straightforward submission of a valid review. At the top of the test block, we'll call submit review, then copy and paste the email and review text values in. Since we're handling everything inside our custom command, We'll remove the two set values and the one submit form. Submit review handles all of this. We're going to keep our has review check as that's the part that's unique to this test. Now it's time for our next test. In this one, we don't set the value in either form field, we just call submit form. Therefore, we'll just replace submit form with submit review and won't pass anything into it. The main benefit of the switch is that we don't need to duplicate the form selector inside our test. By sticking with our common command, we create consistency in our test patterns. Our third test makes full use of the submit review command. First, we'll use it to submit an empty review. This makes our first error message appear. Next, we'll submit the review with just an email address added. This pops the next error. Finally, we'll submit a valid review with both email and review text entered, which will allow us to test that the error messages are all cleared. Our final test is similar to our previous changes, submitting an empty form, then attempting a submit with just the email address. This time, though, we're checking for focus. Still, the changes needed are the same. With our updates made, let's save the file and run our review test to ensure that they all still pass. Our test should operate exactly the same as before, so we should see four green dots. As expected, things worked out well. Reviewing the file, you can see the tests are a bit cleaner than before. We have fewer repeated selectors inside of our test, and fewer repeated commands as well. Add command is a really great utility for writing more maintainable and readable tests, and can help when explaining to others what your test is doing. That said, there's still a lot of repetition in our test with selectors and is visible calls. We'll cover how to improve that with page objects in the next module. Before that, though, we're going to dive into two more customization options, starting with the execute command in the next video.